everybody. I hope you had a nice day and a nice week, a nice time until today. Today I would like to talk about sadness and depression. In my previous video about anxiety and the formula of anxiety, I mentioned the basic emotions, fear, sadness, anger, surprise, contempt, disgust and joy. So sadness, just like any other basic emotion, has a psychological universal theme and a universal function, which is most likely about the loss of a loved one or the loss of a very important item, as well as once you recognize that you have not had something. So if you recognize, for example, that you didn't have love in your life, your mother, your father, someone else didn't love you. So not having that can cause sadness as well. The universal function of sadness is the call of help and the activation of resource. Now, what is depression? You have a depression. This needs to be understood. You are not the depression. Once you understand that you have a depression, then you will understand that you can get rid of it. The depression is not you. You are not the depression. It is a serious medical illness that involves the brain. It is a lot more than just the feeling of sadness and being down for a few days or something. So sadness starts to persist and it starts to interfere with your everyday life. Millions of people around the world are suffering from a depression and each human suffers at least two to three times from it during a lifetime. What are the symptoms of depression? Sadness or feeling of being empty, the loss of interest and pleasure, as well as reduced activities and joyfulness, the change in weight, which means overeating or loss of appetite, pains, cramps, aches, digestive problems, gastrointestinal issues, loss of energy, tiredness, difficulty of sleeping or even sleeping disorders, both onset and sleeping through the night, or even oversleeping and waking up being very tired. Worthlessness is another thing, which is not a feeling, it is a cognition. Hopelessness, irritability, guilt as a schema or pattern, which is also a cognition. So again, when we talk about a cognition, this is something that you make up. It is something that you think. Worthlessness comes from me thinking that I'm not good enough. I'm thinking this. It is not a feeling. Poor capacity of attention, concentration, memory and or other executive functions of your brain, as well as thoughts of death, or you might have even suicidal thoughts. These are the symptoms of depression that we're looking at. There are a variety of causes, endogenous causes, exogenous causes. So a genetic predisposition, um, if you have someone in the family who suffered from depression, father, most likely mothers, they will pass this on as a predisposition to their children. Diathesis stress model, which means that there is a correlation between stress, anxiety, and depression. The more stress you have, the more vulnerable you're gonna be, the more anxious you're gonna be, and the more you're risking to suffer from a depression. Now your brain chemistry is gonna change. You're gonna have reduced or lack of, reduced amount or lack of um, serotonin and dopamine which is not going to be transported and transferred correctly intersynaptically I don't want to get into this too much because this is going to exaggerate the frame of this video and then there is the exogenous um, cause which is or which are the environmental factors for example the loss of a loved one loss of an item that you very much liked some other stressful situations and as well when you recognize all of a sudden that there has been something that you have missing throughout your life for example the love uh, 
of your partner, the, the love of your parents, or things like that. Now, there are different types of depression. Depressive episode, which is not sadness. So if I feel sad today and tomorrow, the third or fourth day, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna feel better, I'm gonna be joyful, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go to work, I'm gonna do my sports, things like that. So this is a fluctuation. I was sad and now the sadness is gone, I'm back to my life, to the normality, okay? This is not depression. When we talk about a depressive episode, we're talking about an episode, an episode of, for example, two to four weeks. Within the two to four weeks, you will suffer from the sadness daily. So the sadness is always there during this episode. Dysthymia is another type of depression, which is persistent. And it becomes a part of your personality. So you're always negative. You're always sad. The sad mood is always underlying your life, your, your daily business. <clears throat> Major depression is the most severe one. It, is, it has a recidive, so it comes back. And today uh, it will be treated pharmacologically and also with RTMS and cognitive behavioral therapy and other therapies. Bipolar disorders, which means you have a, for example, maniac episode, which is the top peak, and then you're gonna fall deep into a depression. So there is also a correlation between the top peak in the maniac episode and the deep depression. The higher the peak, the deeper the depression. And during the maniac phase, or episode, you're gonna think you're God, you know everything, you have all the solutions, you are the best whatsoever. And during the deep or depression episode, depressive episode, you're gonna fall into deep, deep hole. That's the bipolar disorder, most of the time treated pharmacologically. <clears throat> we have also seasonal affective disorders, which means that um, during the fall and winter time, we're lacking sunlight, vitamin D2, serotonin, so we might suffer from a depression then that we should have a look at. These are different types. There are also other types of depression that I'm not gonna talk about in this video about. Depression can be demonstrated differently. It can be demonstrated in women, um, they experience depression more often than men anyway. They have a biological and hormonal predisposition to it. Women may be linked to women's higher depression rate, so they show a higher depression rate than men. And women with depression, they typically have symptoms of big sadness, worthlessness, and guilt. Now. Remind yourself that worthlessness is a cognitive schema. So if you always think you're worthless, then it means that you're thinking it. It is not a feeling that you have. You're making it up. So don't. Men more likely to be very tired, aggressive, irritable, and very angry. And they are very tired. They don't want to go to work. They don't want to do activities. So they're not enjoying their lives anymore. And they tend to also sleep a lot. So now also children can suffer from anxiety. Children may pretend to be sick. They might not be willing to go to school, cling to a parent, worry that a parent might die. Um, problems at school, irritability might also occur in teenagers. Also anger and aggressivity, impulsivity could be a part of it. Older adults less likely admit sadness or grief. So they try to hide their symptoms. More likely to have medical conditions which are contrib contributing to the depression such as a stroke or heart disease and things like that. And then side effects of certain medication can also contribute to a depression. Now depression has a correlation with appetite 
So depression can either increase or decrease your appetite. You might be gaining weight or losing weight. When you feel sad, you may try to comfort yourself with sugar types of food. So women, they tend to eat a lot of chocolates. Men, they eat a lot of food. They overcompensate with it because food and eating is creating dopamine in our brain. That's why it gives us that feeling of being lighter uh, within the depression, within the depressive episode. So that's why we compensate or overcompensate with it. How is the depression treated? Get assessed and diagnosed by a professional. Now we can treat it pharmacologically. So it's pharmacotherapy, medication. We can get counseling and coaching. If it's depression as a clinical indication, so that's the sickness we're talking about, you should see a clinical psychotherapist. We have the possibility today of doing RTMS, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is highly effective and as far as we know, without side effects. So a very good method, very popular today, recognized by the FDA and very effective. And there is another method, which is the ECT, the electroconvulsive therapy that is known as the electroshocks today. Patients will be anesthetized, so in earlier times they weren't, today they are. Yet ECT has a lot of side effects and RTMS is replacing ECT. So it is really very effective and a very smooth method of non-pharmaco treatment for effective non-pharmaco treatment for uh, recidive major depressions and other depressive disorders. Prevention is one of the best things that you can do anyway. So prevent it. Prevent it by doing sports, doing activities, doing your hobbies, changing your old patterns and schemata, changing the way you think, so your cognitions. Be positive. Don't go for that negativism throughout the day. Meditation, yoga, so these are many things that you can do. How can we help ourselves and how can we help someone that is suffering from a depression? Well, first find a mental health professional. Now, understand please that you have a depression. You are not the depression, do not personalize it. So understand that depression is not being the self of you the self of yours. It is not who you are. It is what you have and how you feel. So once you understand I have it, I also can put it to the side and get rid of it. It's not as easy as, as I'm talking about. It's possible. Be understanding, offer support, be patient with the people that suffer from depression, be encouraging. Listen carefully to what they would like to talk about. Suicide is one big theme in depression, so suicide should be taken very seriously and it needs to be reported to the professionals, to the house doctor and to the mental health professional. Do activities with them, go to sports, make them move and give them the feeling that they can come back to the normal life in quotation marks. So I wish that you enjoyed the video. It was nice having you with us. Thank you for listening and paying attention. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you would like to, you're more than welcome there to subscribe. Enjoy your day, enjoy your time. Have a good time until next week. See you then, bye bye.